Judah's Remnant. In our last story, Jeremiah witnessed the downfall of Judah. King Nebuchadnezzar used the Chaldean army to lay waste to all of Jerusalem. Hundreds of thousands of people were taken captive, and the remaining rulers of Judah were beheaded and trampled. Jeremiah, however, was spared from the Babylonians. He was given a choice to go to Babylon and live comfortably, or remain with his people. Now we see the remaining Judeans trying to rebuild their city. However, even in the tragedy of loss and tyranny, there still remains greedy people hungry for power, inspired by the book of Jeremiah. Hello, this is Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our last episode, we heard of the demise of Zedekiah, who resisted God's will and the Babylonian army to the bitter end. We saw the contrast between his attitude and arrogance and that of the great prophet Jeremiah, who obeyed God's will and even sacrificed his own comforts for the safety and the sake of others. Today, we'll hear how the remnant of Judah who remained after the Babylonian conquest will attempt to rebuild a broken city. God will bless the efforts of those who sought to live peacefully with their oppressors, but yet we'll see how the desire for power and control still overshadows the attempts to put the city back together again. Let's listen now to God's Word. Judah had been captured. King Nebuchadnezzar demolished Jerusalem's defenses and reduced the holy temple into a pile of rubble. The wealthiest and most educated of Judah were carted off to Babylon. There they were forced to contribute to the Babylonian economy. Jeremiah remained in Judah at Mitzpah along with the poorest of the country who were left to remain. There they were governed by a man by the name of Gedaliah. He swore to the remnant, saying, We must not be afraid to serve the Chaldeans and Babylonians. I will represent us to them and plead for their favor day and night. Gedaliah led the remaining Hebrews as they worked the fields, rebuilt homes, and stored up food for themselves. Each few weeks a tribute would be required of them, and Gedaliah would deal with their oppressors peacefully. Gedaliah desired for the remaining survivors of the Babylonian conquest to survive. Not only did they survive, but the Lord blessed their hand, and their crops grew in great abundance. However, there were some who were determined to fight against the Chaldeans. Ishmael, a man of royal blood, hated that Gedaliah would submit to Babylon with such ease. So he conspired against him to assassinate him. Gedaliah slept in his home soundly after a hard day at work. A shadow moved across the room towards his bed. As the shadow grew larger over his bed, Gedaliah drew his sword and caught the figure off guard. It was not Ishmael, but his friend Johanan. Gedaliah put down his sword and took a deep breath. Both men were silent for a moment. Let me defend you, Johanan whispered to his friend. If you die, all the Judeans will be scattered. Let me go and assassinate him before he does so to you. Gedaliah was old friends with Ishmael. He could not believe he would do such a thing. No, he replied. We cannot be killing one another. Too many have been lost. Weeks later, Gedaliah traveled to each village to check up on the people. As he was walking, Ishmael and a group of his men ambushed him. There was no time to react. Gedaliah was struck down with one swipe of Ishmael's blade. Over the next week, Ishmael began a tirade of killing. He slaughtered priests and servants that were loyal to Gedaliah. All those he did not kill, he took captive, and Ishmael assumed governance of the Judean remnant. However, Johanan would not allow his friend's death to go unpunished. He rallied the leaders of the remaining forces and marched against Ishmael. There at the Pool of Gibeon, Johanan led a rescue mission to save Ishmael's captives. Johanan fought with the rage of a man who had just lost his friend. He wept as he swung his sword. Eventually, he backed Ishmael into a corner and the captives were released. However, Ishmael and eight of his men escaped to the Ammonites. Johanan knew that punishment awaited the remnant, since Gedaliah had been killed. So he gathered the remaining women and children and fled to Egypt to seek refuge. As Johanan and his people were making plans to leave, Jeremiah stopped them. He stood before the people and begged them not to go. He knew that only slavery awaited them in Egypt. 
The Lord has blessed our work here thus far. Our crops are steady, and our relationship with Babylon is mending. Do not leave, Jeremiah implored. But the people were still unsteady. They began to clamor and grumble. Jeremiah lifted his voice for all to hear and said, If you leave, famine and sword will follow you. The Lord desires for this remnant to build Jerusalem back to its former glory. Fear not, for there are great things ahead. As Jeremiah was speaking, Johanan's fist blew through his jaw. He fell to the floor. Disoriented, he looked to see Johanan's angry and worried face. You are a liar, Johanan spat. You are a tool of the Chaldeans and Babylonians, nothing more. So Johanan bound Jeremiah up and took him and the rest of the people out of Judah towards Egypt. Little did they know that the Lord had set in motion plans for Nebuchadnezzar to overtake Egypt as well. There would be no escaping God's will. In today's reading, Judah has been decimated by Babylonian forces. Most of the Judeans who were left alive were taken to Babylon as captives. The wealthiest were to integrate into Babylonian society and contribute to the nation's economy. But there was a remnant, the poorest population of Judah, left in their land to rebuild. And Jeremiah, the great prophet of God, remained as well. The Babylonians allowed a Judean to rule the people and ensure that they served Babylon and paid tribute when it was required. This duty was given to a man named Gedaliah. He was wise and wanted to see Judah rebuild and experience relative peace despite their terrible condition. So he resolved to deal peaceably with the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, making the best of a bad situation. Jeremiah was there to support him. God blessed the efforts of those who remained, and the land prospered. It was a glimmer of hope for Judah, a sign that God was still with them. But there were those who opposed Gedaliah and hated the foreign invaders. They didn't want to keep the peace, but continued to war against Nebuchadnezzar just as foolishly as Zedekiah had done. One such person was Ishmael, and he planned to kill Gedaliah and seize power. One night, Gedaliah was surprised in his room by a man he thought was there to kill him, but he was ready with his sword. As it turned out, however, it was a friend by the name of Johanan. Johanan cared a great deal for Gedaliah and did not want to see him fall to Ishmael, so he suggested they strike first, killing Ishmael before he could get to Gedaliah. Here we have two men, Gedaliah and Johanan, who both want the same thing but have different approaches. Johanan is quick to turn the violence to defeat opposition from within, but Gedaliah wisely knows that if they begin war with each other, killing those who oppose them, Judah would be far worse off, so he lets Ishmael live. It was an honorable choice, but it didn't work out, as one day Gedaliah was ambushed and killed by Ishmael. Now Judah was under the leadership of a very cruel man who quickly went about killing those who opposed him, including priests and servants who had shown loyalty to Gedaliah. Johanan will not stand for this, and once more he responds in anger with more violence. He attacks Ishmael's men and nearly defeated him, but Ishmael escaped at the last moment. Knowing there would be retribution for his attempt, Johanan gathers women, children, and all those not following Ishmael, making plans to flee to Egypt. It's an understandable impulse, but Johanan wants to know it is the right one, so he inquired of Jeremiah. The prophet goes to the Lord for guidance, and we hear God's response in Jeremiah 42 verses 11 and 12. Do not fear the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Do not fear him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. I will grant you mercy, that he may have mercy on you and let you remain in your own land. So what was the answer? Don't go to Egypt. God says, trust me, your life will go from bad to worse if you run away. Johanan had a choice. Just like so many to whom Jeremiah had spoken before, trust God and do his will or take matters into your own hand. Johanan chose the latter, and once more, Jeremiah suffers beatings and imprisonment from those who refuse to listen to God's word. The people fled to Egypt, 
not knowing that soon that land too would fall to Babylon. If only, if only they had obeyed God and trusted him, life would have been so much different. It's so important that we learn from mistakes, including the mistakes of others. And we always must remember and reflect daily on the fact that God can be trusted, that his word is sovereign and secure and supernatural, and that our future is secure because we live with the promises of God. And it is always right to run to the will of God and never away from the will of God. Dear God, we always thank you for the scripture, which teaches us how to live our lives. We know that even when things seem lost, you are faithful and you preserve a remnant, a people for your glory. Help us always to listen to your counsel, wise counsel that comes from you, to seek peace rather than war, and that we would trust you for your provision for our every need. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. We are so glad that you have joined us. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. You can download the Pray.com app and join millions of people who are listening daily to the Bible in a Year. I want to encourage you to make prayer and Bible study a priority in your life, that you would seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. If you enjoy this broadcast, let me encourage you to share it with others people that you love, people that you know, people in your church, because we believe the Word of God makes an eternal difference in people's lives. If you want more resources as to how you can live the Christian life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. That's jackgraham.org. God bless you.